Life on Earth is made possible by a delicate and fragile balance. Human activity in the past few centuries has altered the very face of the planet and has upset this balance. What were once thought of as local problems, such as pollution, deforestation, and the loss of biodiversity, are now seen as global problems. Our survival depends upon a better understanding of this balance and our shared responsibility to maintain it. Namibia, a country with open spaces but few people, is part of this global environment. Caretaker of one of this planet's most unique environments, the Namib Desert, Namibia is a beacon of hope for protecting the world's natural treasures. Since independence, a number of successful initiatives to protect the environment have brought back healthy numbers of wildlife and a booming tourism industry. But as the country develops, many Namibians remain unaware of their impact on the natural environment, threatening to lead the country down the all too common path of unsustainable industrialization. Understanding the delicate balance of nature is essential to sustain and improve the global environment. However, most Namibians grow up with little to no environmental education. The reason I wanted to put an environmental education center into the Namib Desert is because of the beauty of the desert. I mean, this is one of the most beautiful places in the whole world. The whole idea behind Nadit really is in order to have people to really critically analyze how do they live, why do they live the way that they do, and how can they change it in order to have a better impact, not only for their environment, but also for themselves. The Namib Desert Environmental Education Trust is a not-for-profit organization supported primarily by private donations and grants with some corporate donations. This generosity allows Nadit to invite groups of 40 children and adults, regardless of income, for a week-long environmental education program at its center. Located in the heart of the Namib Desert, the center hosts about 20 groups per year, including schools, youth, and adult community groups from both urban and rural areas. We have tried to, to put it as a year in our calendar at the school that every year we have to bring a group of students to Nadit. 70% of all of our schools per year are returning schools. This success rate is due to Nadit's symbiotic relationship with the Namibian school system. Nadit is an extension of the classroom where students and teachers can see concepts put into practice. The best way to learn it is when you see it, feel it, do it yourself. You need experiential learning, hands-on experience. You can't teach somebody about the desert environment where somebody has not seen a desert before. Not only is it a center of learning about the environment, Nadit is an experience in living for the environment. The most important part was that this was a real model of sustainable living. With water saving, energy saving features. All of those things are there to support the activities. And most of the education centers don't really have that. Frequently, the very model for sustainable technology is inspired by nature itself. The environment is fixing everything and that's something that we have to appreciate and, and learn from. Seeing what it's like to live at a center that is sustainable, you know, learning to take a shower with less than 10 liters of water. In addition to water, Nadit focuses on waste, biodiversity and energy issues. We teach children about solar energy and that we receive light and heat energy from the sun and how we can manipulate those forms of energy in order to use it to use a solar cooker, a solar oven. They see it works. It's like a click in the head and they say, oh, this is, this is actually cool. Financially wise, it's much easier. For me, living in a sustainable way where I use solar electricity, I use a solar cooker to cook, I don't have to pay for anything. Because if you use solar energy, it's better because the, uh, the sun is free, you don't buy it, but electricity, you have to buy it. And uh, the amount to pay it is even increasing. The children at Nadit will determine the direction of Namibia's future development. But the future holds many obstacles, including ongoing poverty and unsustainable development. And Nadit is very special because 
it's learning us more how to do things by our own, not to be turned by someone and give it to you. And this is now the, the fuel efficient stove. You can see some papers. Some... It's easy to make, so any kid can make it. Lots of the building was made with recycled wood. It showed Namibians that they can do something without having a lot of money. Visitors who come to the Nadid Center take back what they have learned to their communities. We invited the community around the school. We invited also parents of the learners and other schools also. And then we come and explain to them how do the, the solar cooker work, how do we use this, uh, the solar oven. We, we have the opportunity especially to, to learn from other, other people's mistakes. And that's exactly what edu environmental education is about. Um, it's people understanding what they're doing to the environment and that they are part of it. No matter how industrialized or advanced you are living in New York City, you're still part of nature. Perhaps even more difficult than overcoming the technical and financial obstacles is the human resistance to change and the fear our quality of life will suffer. The sustainable living does not lower your lifestyle at all. I think it actually improves your lifestyle. And I think part of living sustainably is actually just going back to the way that we used to live. Thanks to Nadit, Namibians are learning to live in harmony with their environment. The day may soon come when we, the world, will look to this little outpost of progress and follow their lesson plan.